Hi there, and welcome to this video about solid thinking components. In this case, we will take a look at step 3 of the 12 steps of the Navier-Stokes equations, and I will just start by quickly going through the notes. Um, you will notice that in this equation, which is the diffusion equation in 1D, we have, for the first time ever, a second derivative. And we don't know how to deal with that yet, but it is described below. So we have two Taylor expansions, one for u from i plus 1, and the second one from u from i minus 1. And those two equations both have the second order derivative in it. So we expanded the Taylor expansion beyond the second derivative. And what you can also see is that the second uh, the, 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 the uneven terms of those Taylor expansions, they also they, they cancel themselves out um, when summing those two equations. So that's rather neat because now your error is with the order of um, four, so which is a nice thing. Um, and here you can solve for the second derivative and use this equation in your diffusion equation. So all things said, you just have to input this equation and how this is done and composed. Let me show that to you. Um, all right, um, we have the initial conditions. So we have the same, same uh, code like in step one or step two. Uh, in this case, we have the sigma parameter, which is used to both link the time dt or, and the space increment dx. Um, so in this case, we have a quadratic um, dependence on dx. So dt equals sigma times dx squared divided by nu. Nu is the viscosity. And the viscosity doesn't really play a role in this step because, as you can see, we have dt is something divided by nu. And rather, here in the in the actual equation, we have nu times dt, so nu cancels itself out. So nu doesn't play a role. So if you change nu, nothing should happen. Um, well, but it surely will happen if you change sigma, because then you're playing around with the CFL number, and yeah, then you can mix things up. Let's try that. So basic conditions is like this. Quickly look at that, yeah. And if I change sigma, for example, to 0 0.5, see that it gets all more discreet and not so smooth again. Um, yeah, I encourage you to just take the code and play around with it a little bit, try to understand what each parameter does. And as always, thanks for watching. 